Hi, in this uh, video, I will use uh, CS scan uh, author and adapter to scan uh, this uh, remote control object. In the, it has a uh, really little feature. So if I scan the author in uh, geometry mode, it will uh, lose the track. So I will use uh, marker mode on both scanners. As you can see here, I don't have uh, markers on my turntable anymore. Uh, the reason is that if you want to scan something a bit taller, uh, for example, if I want to scan the, this bench here, when it uh, as soon as it detects the, uh, the marker, the blue laser will come out. The scanner can detect many markers. And as soon as I put some inclination to the angle, it starts to lose the marker. If I put more angle, all the uh, marker is gone and it say it doesn't have enough marker. If I put it back, so the marker is back. So if I add the pyramid like this, uh, this one has a 30 degrees angle. So the scanner can detect steeper angle without losing the track on the marker. You just need uh, to put uh, as many. It doesn't hurt. This thing costs nothing. Uh, it still can see from the horizontal angle parallel to the table. You can see, still can see the markers. But if I uh, put some angle inclination, See, it's, it's not losing track, it still can see the, the markers. So if you want to put the scanner in the 45 degrees angle, you need a 30 degrees marker, 10 markers, so it's plenty. So the scanner can move fast because it has many things to track with. And uh, I also have this uh, 45 degrees uh, cube with uh, five uh, markers. Uh, this one has a steeper angle. So you can go up to uh, almost 90 degrees like this to the table, but uh, you can't move uh, the scanner too tall. It will lose the track because there's nothing in the air here. Here's uh, what you need to know about the markers. There are two types of marker. This one is six millimeters. They're both six millimeters. The one here is a uh, plain white dot. It's compatible with ferret and most of the uh, remote point scanner. And this one that come with the uh, author and laptop. It's a uh, refractive. It has like metallic uh, color here, uh, light gray color, metallic silver. This one is just a uh, plain white dot. So I will uh, scan this uh, remote control in this orientation, and then I turn it around to complete one scan, and then I flip it over and make another scan. So and then I merge the top and bottom together because uh, if I put it like this and make one scan and another scan like this back, uh, I will have a um, but uh, with the horizontal orientation, the overlap area is, is smaller. So I do like this. If I do in vertical position. The, I have more overlap area. So if I put it upright and start scanning, the, the scanner will lose the track because it cannot see the marker on the side of the object and it cannot detect the markers on the turntable because it's too high. So I add this uh, marker tower and then I, I can scan as tall as I want to. And this one is about 20 centimeters without uh, putting markers on it. But uh, one thing important is that your turntable firm, no movement. So I put some uh, tape here so that it won't move when I turn the table. I set the resolution to 0 0.2 because uh, I use it in a Blender. Um, 0 0.2 is more than enough. Uh, brightness is auto. Most of the time I don't need to adjust it with the laptop. And the uh, IR exposure is for the marker here. I also don't need to adjust it. It's set uh, to manual because I use the same marker, so I don't need to adjust it. As you can see here, that it tracks all the way up here without any issue. So I start scanning now. Right. So it's easy tracking with the laptop. The laptop is uh, better with the marker because it's the only mode that it can scan. If I set it to 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 uh, viewport resolution, it will take a uh, longer time to scan and it, it will turn clean slower. This all looks green to me up here okay stop the scanner take a second scan you need to be sure that it won't move both the markers and the object if it moves then you get the ghosting it can't even vibrate just a little bit I mean it has to be static
here uh, you have a green and white uh, dot as a marker I think the green one means that it's uh, using for reference dot the white one was the old one that it was detected I recommend that you get a joint table with the steel bearing because this one is wobble. Okay, it should be fine. All the information uh, with the author. I need to move the tower a bit closer because the detection area of the uh, author is uh, smaller than laptop. Okay, uh, if you have both uh, author and laptop, you can scan uh, with both scanners in one project. So I'm gonna use uh, marker mode here and turntable. I uh, will flip the, uh, flip the uh, viewport on the scanner because it's a tall object. I want to hold it in this position. As you can see here, that it uh, sees the uh, marker. But uh, if I move it too close, it will lose the, the track. I need to uh, yeah, do the manual exposure with the author. Okay, I start the scanner. As you can see that the detection range of the uh, author is uh, smaller than laptop. You can also mix the uh, marker size between 6 and 3. It, it will give a uh, distinctive coordinates to the scanner. It's all green. So I stop the scan. I rotate the camera. Uh, manual adjustment. Because I need to be this close. Right, it looks about right. I start the scan now. See, you see uh, not many markers comparing to uh, laptop. Laptop can see small marker. The detection area of the author is smaller. Something to note if you don't scan the medium size object, I recommend laptop. So, author also works well with the, with the marker, but you need to put uh, a little bit more markers because it has a smaller field view so it just uh, to swipe and it's turned green so I think it's faster than a uh, laser now I have about uh, one thing to note uh, author when you scan with uh, uh, geometry mode it will scan faster at uh, 30 frames per second but when I use a uh, marker it will scan slower. Now I get like 23, 20, not uh, sometimes 30. Oh, uh, something good about the marker mode is that it will never drift. So you don't have a drifting problem with the markers. And you always get your scan correctly. Dimensions. Now let's look. Uh, okay, so I stop the scan. So after processing, the, I draw this box in the, the CAD software. And then I use uh, the scan mesh that I get from the scanner to cut out, to cut out the curve inside here. 
Uh, this curve is very difficult to draw, and it takes like uh, a few hours to draw it. You see, it's it's a, a 3D curve. Uh, I say 4D curve. But if I uh, scan this one and then I use the mesh to cut uh, the block here, I get like perfect fit in less than five minutes. I process with uh, After Effects. I use the uh, 0.2 uh, resolution. I trim down the uh, bottom edge here just to be sure that it's a sharp edge because it's going to be merged with the bottom part. Now we have uh, almost 500k point bottom part. Uh, you can get a higher resolution, but I need this for uh, uh, operation in, in Blender. Uh, too high resolution will cause trouble with the hardware. I just trim here, just remove the display, which is uh, top left there, bottom left there. Start. Okay, so we have a uh, merging complete. Look very nice. So after merging, your scan data will be gone. It could be somewhere in the folders here. I don't know, but it's gone. Uh, if someone knows where the uh, point cloud from uh, original scan is before merging, please let me know. Here, here you can see the, the overlap area here from here to here. We have almost uh, 1 million points and then I close it because I need to do uh, cutting in the blender. It has to be closed, uh, solid. Ah, uh, here's the result uh, mesh in the with the laptop. Uh, please note that I use 0.2 resolution. Okay, let's uh, move to other 0.2 same, so we can compare it. Okay, here's the result. It looks more dense. 1.3 million points. So your solution is 0.2. So with the same resolution setting, other gives more points than laptop. Uh, that's strange. Okay, let's process the, uh, the top one, the last one, 0.2. So here's the result. Ah, you can see here that the author, it see through the transparent glass. And give a very smooth uh, point cloud. We have a bottom and the top. Alright. Some uh, lines here, maybe minimum, and here too. Uh, I think it's smooth, but it uh, has different uh, density. I mesh with uh, 1.2 million, same as the laptop. Uh, probably I didn't clean up the edge very well, so it shows like uh, joints. Uh, let's compare it. Uh, you can see a faint joints on the uh, laptop too, but uh, they look similar. The other is smoother. Laptor has the um, look at the nipples here. Yeah, the um, the uh, laptor it's uh, has more detail. This one looks like uh, the uh, the laptor is better. Okay, I I use the one from uh, actually it's the same. I use the one from the uh, author to export to Blender. Uh, here's the base that I draw in the cat, and this is the remote control that we get from the author. I try to uh, dip it here like this with some angle. So if I move this up, you will see it has been cut out, but there are some uh, extrusion from the clip here that I need to remove. Uh, yeah. Now we can uh, scrape it we need to scrape it out. A, there is a better way I think to do it, but this is the fastest one. Uh, one more thing, if you look at the statistic, you have 1.6 million mesh and uh, the printing software doesn't like it because it's too many. You can uh, you can decimate it, this command decimate. Um, if you want uh, 500,000, so it's about 30%, you put 0 0.3, so it will decimate this uh, object. See, you get 500,000 triangles and uh, it looks almost the same. The printer, this is a uh, high, higher detail than the printer can can print, right? Filament uh, nozzle is 0 0.4 and uh, hit apply and then you can export it. It will be better. Sometimes if you put uh, too many triangles, it will crash the printing software. Okay, that's for today. Thanks for watching.